Welcome to Unit 5 of OnlinePHPClass.com. And in this unit we're going to talk about include files and functions. So why do we want to talk about include files and functions? Well, sometimes we want to reuse the code that that we create. Sometimes it's helpful if we can create uh, projects down the line that reuse code that we've already created. Other times we want to reuse code in the same project uh, in different sections of it. We often want to call the same code several times and sometimes we want to make our code easier to read. One way to do that is by using code that you've used before through functions and the like. We can then divide and conquer big problems into smaller easy to read and code functions. I once developed a very, very complex uh, Jabber bot, a, bot uh, a computer that uses the Jabber XML client. And one way I did that was using PHP. I wrote a very, very complicated uh, user authorization uh, mechanism and that used a lot of very, very small functions that when combined turned into a very very huge function. Um, there was one function that did all the authorization and it relied on all of the smaller functions. It's much 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 easier to take a really big task and turn it into small small tasks and then combine the smaller tasks. Uh, it's easier to read especially when you get to name your functions um, based on what they do and then all you have to do you can do things um, where you, where it just becomes very, very easy when you put it into control structures and the like. Anyway, uh, let's move on. So first I want to talk about the include statement. Include takes the content of the file that is being included and evaluates it as if it were inserted into the calling script. So the example here is from php.net and it's called vars.php. And all vars.php has is color equals green and fruit equals apple. Then there's another script called test.php and in test.php you have two examples where you're echoing. You're echoing A and then var the variable color and the variable fruit and it shows you in the comments that the first one just results in echoing A. Then we include vars.php and when you re-echo the exact same line you get a green apple. The variables are as if we set them in test.php. Uh, just to clarify, vars.php and test.php are two separate files and in test.php, in this example, we are including vars.php. It's as if we took color equals green and fruit equals apple and put them inside of test.php right where the include statement is. Okay. Next we have the require statement. Now require works like include except the script will actually be halted if the specified file cannot be found. Okay. Include allows the script to continue, so if the code inside your include a file is required, use the require keyword instead of include. They function exactly the same, except require will halt the script if the, if the include file is not there. That's helpful if you, have, uh, if you have code that's required. I mean, that's why it's called that, really. Um, if you want to, uh, one of the applications, uh, actually several applications I write, use role-based authentication. And in those applications, um, the role check, um, role check.php is my uh, standard for things that check uh, roles on my applications. And the role check.php is required um, because if you can't verify the roles that a user has, I don't want the script to continue. I don't want the website to, f to continue to function. Um, because it's really missing an important piece. Um, so there's the difference between require and include. Now you also have include once and require once. Okay, If you don't want the code inside your included file to be included, if it were already included, you can use include once or require once. Okay, They function exactly the same as their, their counterparts, meaning include once functions like include and require once functions like require except if the file you're going to include or require was already included or required then 
by using that function you're not getting uh, you're not going to uh, re-include it or re-require it so with PHP 4 PHP 4 is actually case sensitive for determining if the file was already included and PHP 5 is case insensitive okay and my note here says that this is particularly needed on non Nix based servers so non Unix or Linux um, based servers and the reason why is because in Windows the OS is case insensitive however bear in mind that if you are using PHP 4 on a Windows server the case sensitivity still carries through as if you were running on a Nix based server okay Nix based server people who use them are familiar with uh, case sensitivity um, in those particular types of operating systems okay so one place where I use the once keywords is to include a file of database functions because if that were included with each file the functions would be redeclared and functions can only be declared once in PHP so basically if I have multiple pages of a site and if I'm including files and those files um, when included also uh, include the same database functions I can't have nested files that are including the file before it um, I can't have them you, uh, de define the same exact function names uh, because PHP will only allow the functions to be declared once so if you get something like cannot redeclare function as an error when you are writing your code one reason for that is because you've included or required um, a file multiple times either in the same file um, or you've included one that then included another and somewhere down the line you're including the same file that has functions defined and therefore PHP when when uh, when parsing the entire uh, script that particular script it'll say you can't redefine cannot redeclare the uh, the functions um, this is particularly helpful for me when um, when I do headers because I'll put in a header things like the role check things like database connectivity things like sessions uh, which we'll talk about it uh, in another unit so those particular things in the header and I want each page to include the header because on a site where you have to log in I don't want somebody to be able to hit a page um, that's further that's that's on the secure side of the site so to speak um, I want if the person does hit that page I want them to be redirected to the login form okay so one way I do that is through things like this however uh, you may have include files uh, that um, you may have include files down the line that rely on the same functions so you want to be careful um, one tip while I'm on the topic of include and require is you always want to name your if you create files specifically for including um, you may see some applications that end them in .inc for include I strongly recommend in fact I pretty much require it that you name them in dot, dot you have a dot PHP at the end I don't care if you put dot INC dot PHP okay but you should have a dot PHP at the end and the reason why is because dot INC as an extension on the file is not um, configured in the web server more than likely to actually be parsed so what happens is people will uh, people if they know the name of the file they can just type the name of the file into the web browser in your URL and they can actually see the text because any um, in particular with Apache um, if the web server doesn't know the extension doesn't know how to actually render it it'll assume it's plain text okay so software vendors you gotta be careful because sometimes people will name it like db.inc and they'll include the database credentials well if anybody knows where that db.inc file is they can just call it directly um, some people will protect it, that directory with an HT access file um, which we won't actually cover. If you want to know more about HD access files, feel free to uh, post in the forum. But basically, some people will protect directories like that, but you got to be careful because Apache configurations can be told not to allow HD access files either, in which case the vulnerability still exists. So the best way to get around it is to, if you're going to include a file like db.inc, if you're going to create a file like db.inc, call it db.inc.php. Then you know its purposes for include and PHP at, PHP at the end means that the web server is always going to interpret it. 
even if all you have is a file of functions, okay, which is typically what include files are, if that's all their purpose is. Okay? Um, functions, maybe variables. Basically, the files aren't going to echo anything. Okay, so that's what I would uh, recommend and pretty much require. I do that with all of my code. I always name my include files with a .php extension. Okay. So now we'll move on to. Um, I want to talk briefly about variable passing in terms of include files. And an important note is that variables in a parent file are accessible to the included file at the scope in which the include require statement was specified. So what this means is it's I mean it, to go back to the basics it really is as if you took the t the code from the file you're including and placed it in uh, the file you are calling the include file from right in that particular spot with the exception of the PHP tags okay so I mean the the top level PHP tags okay if you have nested ones you know you could still use them anyway Basically, uh, you got to you got to keep scope in mind. If you have a uh, if you have a variable called dollar name, and you then include a file right underneath dollar name, and you change it, okay, you're literally changing the variable in the original file. Okay, so let's say there's um, Okay, and actually to, to the next bullet point, vari variables set or changed in the include file can affect the variables in the parent file, so watch your variable name. So let me go back uh, to that original example. Because here, if I actually did uh, say set color equal to orange, okay, um, and then, you know, and then I actually went to, to continue, uh, I would actually be manipulating the color. So one way is if I set in test.php, say the first line of test.php after the open PHP was uh, color equal orange. Then I include vars.php. The next statement is going to say it's going to have color equal green. You literally changed the variable that you defined in the original file. Okay, so you want to you want to be careful with that. Um, I mean, you just got you got to be careful with scope. And I'm going to show you another example of scope here. Okay, before I okay, the scope the scope example is therefore is coming uh, a little bit down the line. I, I want to talk about functions first because I talk about scope in the context of functions. Only briefly though, specifically from a PHP global perspective. Okay, first, let's talk about functions. Functions are sections of code that, make, that can be called by the code. Okay, they isolate uh, code so that you can call them. I like to think of them sometimes as my little helpers um, in the sense where I can call the function to do a particular little task and then I may have one function that relies on so like there's a parent function or a main function or whatever that relies on uh, those little little functions and I always say little in terms of lines of code you can have you know one line of code that's very very powerful okay so you want to be um, I just mean in terms of lines of code so, for example, if I wanted to print all the numbers from 1 to 10, I could do this. Create a function, function print 1 to 10, and then put a for loop inside. For i equals 1, do while i is less than or equal to 10, i plus plus, and echo i with a break. So, and then at the bottom, uh, underneath that closing brace, I have print 1 to 10, which is the function call. You can put variables uh, inside the parentheses in the, in the function definition. So it could be function print 1 to 10, open paren, variables, close paren. And um, that mean you can set default values for those variables and all sorts of cool things. So if I wanted to print 1 to 10 10 times, I could then do this. For i equals 0, do while i is less than 10, i plus plus, print 1 to 10. So now you have an example of the function print 1 to 10 which breaks down um, an easy to accomplish task, a for loop that prints 1 to 10. And then I'm using another for loop to call print 1 to 10. So in essence I'm getting print 1 to 10 printed 10 times. And 
Uh, to put it all together, you, I mean, it's simple enough that you probably could put it all together and understand it pretty easily. However, you begin to see how as things get more complicated, uh, using functions become even more helpful. So the code that prints numbers from 1 to 10 is then reusable. That is true also. I could take the function, print 1 to 10, put it in any PHP file I want, and call it. All right. Here's the syntax for writing functions. All right. So you have function. Foo is function name in this example. Argument 1, argument 2, all the way up to argument n. Example function is what it's echoing and it's returning red val. Um, in this particular example, I don't know why. So there's no actual red val set. I don't know why PHP would be uh, doing that. But you can return a particular value. So from PHP.net, any valid PHP code may appear inside a function, even other functions and class definitions. You can have nested functions. I don't think I've ever needed a nested function. Um, you can have them. Function names follow the same rules as other labels in PHP. A valid function name starts with a letter or underscore, followed by any number of letters, numbers, or underscores. It's the exact same, um, exact same rules as uh, variable naming convention and that kind of thing. All right. So to call a function, if a function is defined as the result of an if statement, it must be defined and processed before it is called. Otherwise, it doesn't have to be. You can call a function and define it later, okay, as long as it's in the same uh, uh, script, or if, even if you include it later in the script, it essentially uh, parses as if it's in the same script. Uh, to call the function, just use the function name and place the variables inside the parentheses. So here's an example calling the function MySQL numbers, placing the variable query result inside of parentheses. You can assign the results to a variable. Here's an example. Uh, variable dollar $num underscore rows equals mysql underscore num underscore rows query result. So you're taking the number of rows in that query result and storing it in the variable num rows. Here's the global keyword. Consider this. You have con equals mysql connect uh, localhost user password. By the way, we will talk about mysql in a later unit. This is the syntax for how to connect to a mysql database localhost being the server, uh, user being the username of the, my, of the connection, and password being the password for the connection. Um, okay, function connect to DB, return MySQL select DB employees con. Okay, the, fun, the, the syntax for MySQL select DB, which we'll talk about also in the MySQL unit, you're passing it a database. You don't have to pass it um, a connection result, however, uh, or connection identifier rather. However, if you if you don't, it uses the last one that's defined. In this particular case, we're forcing the the uh, the connection um, to be the dollar con. However, as my note says, con is not accessible to connected DB unless Register Globals is on in PHP any, which it is not recommended. So, if Register Globals is off, which we purposefully have, then we there must therefore make con available using the global keyword, and this is how we do it. So this would work. Con equals MySQL connect localhost user password. Function select DB name a DB. Then inside of that function, the first thing we do is global dollar con semicolon. Then the same exact return MySQL select DB, and in this particular case, name of DB uh, dollar con. So I actually have. I don't think I did name a DB in the previous section. No, I didn't. So here I'm also showing you how to pass a um, to utilize a variable passed uh, to the function. And by using global con, basically goes out a, la a level and says, okay, con is set to this particular connection. I know what I'm talking about. Okay. All right, demo time. Write a function that echoes my name to the screen, placing that function in an include file, and then including the file and calling the function one time and in a loop. Okay. All right, so here we have. Doo -doo -doo. All right, here we have. Where are we at? So write a function that that echoes your name to the screen, placing the function include file. Let's do that first.
call it first. Make sure it works. Okay. Now it says placing it in include file. Well, uh, let's see here. Okay, include file. Now, now do I say how I want to call it? And then including the file and calling the function one time. Okay, well, in that case, I'm going to take this out so I'm not. And then what I'll do is I'll call it print my name. Uh -huh. That's the result. In fact, what I'll do is I'll change this. And go here, hit internal preview. All right. That's how you call it. And then in a loop. I just like to indent for form. <laughs> and it all goes across the screen because we didn't put a break. So you could do it two different ways. You could edit the include file. Okay. I'll do that second. You could or you could do print my name. Now see this is what I'm talking about. If you do want to edit this, you gotta put the braces back in or in. So it's Do it this way. Okay. Or, well, I'll leave that here because what I'll do then is I'll put it in the include file and then I'll show you that it's actually going to double space it because it'll have two breaks. If I, if I actually did a preview in the include file, uh, nothing would show up because the include file doesn't actually echo anything. But then if I go to internal preview here, you get it. Alright, so that is the demo. Pretty straightforward. Um, you can get an idea though how things start building. Because um, you can do things, you can even do something like this. You can do echo, hello, print my name. And then um, that's because there's a break in the actual include file. Um, and actually, what am I echoing first? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, why is it doing that? Like, uh, really? It's putting it at the end. Why would I do that? That is really weird. I have no idea why it's doing that. It's doing the echo first. Take this. Oh, oh, I'm curious. If I take this break out, okay, it looks like it's printing this and then it's doing hello, this, hello, this, hello. But it's ending with hello. So, I mean, I don't. How to do that? Hello, print my name. <laughs> oh. 
I do know why. Because the function is going to get evaluated first in terms of order of the operations because when you do assignments you want the function to execute so that you can do an assignment. So in other words if I did uh, well that I don't even know if that's going to set it. It should. So If I do it like this here I want to come back to this. Curious now what this does. Okay, that. So that's the exact same thing. All right. If I didn't do the echo, okay, and I did a return, would that make a difference? Yes. Okay, so I think what's happening is the echo in the function is trumping. So when you call this function, it's saying, you know, oh, I know what to do. Um, I'm going to print onlinephpclass.com. And the function get ex gets executed first. So then you print your, then your echo hello occurs. Okay, it's kind of, kind of tricky. Um, in order of operations, because in order for this assignment to occur, this function has to execute before the assignment operation. Okay, you have to get the result of print my name before you assign it to my underscore name. So, when you call this function, the echo takes place. Then, whatever else happens. So, if you just had this line here, print my name, it would echo onlinephpclass.com, and then it would echo hello, and that's what you saw that it was doing. That's why it does that, because of the order that it needs to take place. So if you do a return, you are getting the value then returned from this function, assigned to this variable, then this variable gets resolved, and then the echo statement occurs. And that's why that works. So that's good that I actually did this. What, my, my intention was to show you how things start building. I can start putting your echo, wrapping it around results. Um, you can now, you don't need the assignment, now that you're using a return, you can now do hello print my name. Okay? It's not actually going to change. But if I change this to hi, you'll see that it is actually working. Okay? Because of the return. So be careful um, when you're doing your function definitions. I typically don't put echoes in my function. Um, unless the function is specifically designed to echo something, but be careful if you want to utilize it like this. And you can see how things start to build. All right. So with that, the exercise is to do the demo. So write a function that echoes your name to the screen, place that function in an include file, and then include the file and call the function one time, and then in a loop. You can uh, go beyond that. You can utilize multiple loops, different types of loops, practice your loop structures. Uh, you can practice with nesting, yeah, include files inside of other include files, practice using require, inquire, uh, require once, include once, um, practice using global. You can do all, all the things that we talked about here. You can, you, you can take them and start building. I, I want to give you the opportunity to experiment and, uh, and just have fun and find out those interesting things. So if you come across things like I just discovered um, or remembered in, that, in reality, the uh, regarding the uh, the order of the operations of the execution of the functions and stuff like that, feel free you know to post in the forum. You can also post any questions, uh, as usual, or uh, observations or just things you want to share, and uh, that are related to the course. And um, yeah, and have fun. I mean, really start to to utilize what it is that we've gone over thus far, and uh, continue to build. Um, because, because as a uh, assuming that you have some aspect of uh, programming background, uh, you can start to imagine how you can use these building blocks um, from PHP, from the LAMP stack, and uh, begin to make uh, sites um, and enhance sites that you already have 
that meet your needs. Be it as simple as adding a dynamic piece to your website or completely creating a web application. All that is possible. And I hope you're getting a lot out of this course thus far. Thanks for staying with us, and I will see you in the next unit.